<laughs> one trillion gold, dollar coin all like iron. it's all just a sham yeah, and it's yeah. all just a joke and that's why we're talking about the great division today because what's going to happen is the people that here we go here we go beautiful day today <laughs> oh hey guys welcome back to your future on bigs and bogs i'm marty bogs and i'm julian biggs and we got spencer on town's greens Thanks for joining us today, folks. We'd like to come at you once a week or so and share our journey through this transitioning world of finance and talk about some subjects that we believe will benefit your future hand simply because they've benefited ours. And folks, yes, believe it or not, we are here to help. So please do us a favor and smash that like button. Subscribe if you're new. Comment below. Let us know where you're from and uh, let's get right into it. What do we have to today and how can we plan for tomorrow? Julian. <laughs> Thanks, Marty. Good to be back in the studio. Today, we're going to talk about the Great Division. What is going on in the media? What do they want? What are they doing with crypto, et cetera? And uh, what... It seems a little fishy. What's going on? It is fishy. It is. Uh, yeah, bing bong. Let's do it. We're going to get into it with the market scope first. Ooh, market scope. All right. So we are looking at the Bitcoin versus US dollar chart on the daily time frame. Uh, and still not much has changed. We're still in the same range. We've been here for, uh, you know, now a couple of months chopping out sideways here. Time of filming this video, $28,932 after catching another rejection under 30K. So the question is now, will we lose this 50% RSI? This is what I'm watching on the daily chart. So if we lose 50%, good chance we drop down to another test of the 40% range. So that's what I'm watching for right now. We could catch a bottom here on top of the 50% RSI and also sitting right looking. around the 20 EMA on the daily too, which is significant for EMA traders. It is significant for EMAs. Absolutely. I personally have stopped kind of watching EMAs. I do use volume profile, but uh, mostly I've just been using key levels lately mm -hmm. and it seems to be working out for me just based on supply and demand. Well, and when you have a confluence between multiple um, things, it's just that much more yeah, evidence. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, we need to hold so the 20, we need to hold the 50. Levels to watch for. Last weekend, we told you we needed to handle handle stay above 28k we managed to hold 28k as support there for quite a few days uh, before getting a leg back up to almost 30k there i think we tapped 29,900 again you can see the resistance line this has been here for over a month now as well and then the top of this channel has been here for over a month now as well so it's looking like we do have a chance to hit the bottom of this again before the top as you can see we hit the mm -hmm. top here and we we just you know, didn't quite make it above 30K again. Mm -hmm. So, no legs. Um, and then potentially put it in a nice bullish, bullish divergence on some sl uh, lower time frames. Exactly. Exactly. That's what I'm looking for. And that, uh, you know, we, we could get that here. We could, we'll see with this RSI. And sometimes here. it so, ducks under just um, a little bit, fakes out before it, you know, it shakes out a little bit of people before it goes up. Yeah. And that's honestly like I, I wanted to take the long all week long, but all week I, long. I, I, ended up, I ended up taking shorts and I did pretty good taking shorts simply because of uh, of what we were seeing. We, we held 28, but every time it would start going up, it just, yeah. we did just, you would see those yeah, bear I didn't, dibs. Uh, I didn't short, I didn't frames. short this one. I did short this one though. Um, and then I put my longs back in here, but mm -hmm. uh, right now I'm kind of sitting on my hands. I do have a small, long position in in case this does make the leg up here then over the next couple of days but again mm -hmm. like i said it's it's kind of likely in my opinion to come down and test the 28k range again and then uh, i'm going to be looking for a support on 27 800 approximately 27 7 um and in my opinion if we get lower than that then you know we could have a chance of just slowing things down chopping it out sideways a little longer than yeah. we thought because we don't want to see a leg up soon here then you know we're uh, less and less likely to see well that i do believe so. since just just on uh, metrics and having and all that stuff coming up we got a little bit uh more shakeouts to come before we're gonna s just take yeah. off and go parabolic um there's a lot of people right now calling a top which is interesting i thought um just because when we actually were at the top two weeks ago they were like okay we're going to the moon wow. it's like come on you guys i remember back here it was uh that would have been monday so on sunday yeah. This was around April 23rd is yeah. when I was saying that that episode is when I was saying the top was near. Yeah, and, and then, then got, in the group the chat one, several days after. Yeah, and here we, we got go. the one more push and that's when I started. And then, I, and then it's funny because I was like, is that the so, final shakeout? And yeah. then it was and I didn't even short that. Well, one. I ended up getting in a short in after it came back up. But yeah, this confirmation here for me, was mm -hmm. I knew that I put in major shorts here. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but again, like I said, we caught the support. So we got one, two tests on this support yeah. here. And again, another test of this is going to look like $28,000. And if you don't know much um, about trading, I think you should just really be looking for the longs. Wait. when it sh don't, don't worry about taking a short because getting wrecked on a short is the worst thing you can possibly do. I, it's, so, it's, <laughs> it's so funny. Like you can make some good money shorting, but I when I... I really enjoy when I see like, oh, 300 million got lecked. I'm like, yes. <laughs> you know, like, because the, the, the reality is leverage is what hurts us all. And if it wasn't for leverage, there wouldn't be these yeah. massive, like, leverage is how we make money and volatility is how we make money. But the reality is there's someone else on the other end getting hurt always, mm -hmm. right? So if we push that message to DCA, which we love to do here, DCA, and everybody goes long, then we all benefit. And that is eventually where Bitcoin's going to be mm -hmm. right now. This is why we push DCA. You go in with whatever you can afford in a month, in a week, whatever it is at a low amount that you can, you know, mm -hmm. use as your, as your savings account for 10 years, then you're golden. You're going to be laughing just like everybody else did. But, uh, you yeah, know, lever the, leverage is eventually it, there'll be no point in shorting. You know, right. Yeah. And, and, and there'll be no point. It's the same in the, in the, in the stock market. Like if they had your best interest in mind and, and the SEC really wanted to secure your value and stuff, then you wouldn't be able to trade the stock market with massive amounts of leverage yeah. you know yeah. what i mean because 90 yeah. percent of that market share is people taking from the market so they knew they know new investors believe that if they get involved in the s p 500 that they're going to make money mm -hmm. all i got to do is keep putting money in here well yeah. guess what you haven't been making any money yeah. lately it might look good right now for this year but well, they're gonna funny dump it on you because they're just like look what it's done in the last two years doesn't that look great and they're like oh and then you're thinking oh yeah that does look great i'd like to hop on that train and that's yeah, when they go look what they did the yeah look what they did in, in march of 2020 before it yeah. started doing exactly how scared many, everybody out of the market. Don't buy rugged. this. Don't buy that. And then we yeah. saw the largest growth in the stock market and, and the economy and when nobody was doing anything. Remember, even so, though it's done twenty points this year. If you think basic economics are how the how the uh, how we grow, it's not. <laughs> it's simple. <laughs> yeah. Look at the charts. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway, yeah, the great divide. It's the That's manipulation of money. It's the manip manipulation of money. Tough for me to say, but it's true. And that's how we grow. And they don't want stagflation because your consumer would love stagflation. Everything would cost the same every all, all the time. Yeah. We'd be able to get, you know, we'd be get, get familiar with our budget. We wouldn't have to keep updating our budget every six months to a year. We'd be able to stick to the same thing and, and it would, everybody would be happier. It'd be easier, but they want things to go down. They want things to go up because the, they're traders. The biggest traders in the space well, are the politicians. That's why they have and that's why they meter yachts. That's why they <laughs> use the narrative and their job title yeah. to manipulate you, tell you when to buy when you shouldn't and tell you when to sell when you shouldn't because there has to be a buyer for every seller. So they want to scare you out of the market so that they can buy your stock or whatever at a lower price. So mm -hmm. they're forcing you to sell or telling you to sell. It's a good idea to sell because it's going to go lower. It's going to go lower, so sell now. But then it doesn't go lower or maybe it goes a little bit lower. And in that case, when it's going lower, you should be buying, right? You buy low and you sell high. Don't listen to anybody else's BS, especially if they're somebody who's we, a ton it, richer than you. I like to flip that, uh, this thing we have in our mind is, supply and demand yeah right and um, the way i trade is i demand my product and then i supply the market with it so supply and demand we, we teach basic economics blah 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 but when i trade that's what i'm thinking i am demanding mm -hmm. my product from all those people who are like oh shit i gotta get rid of this blah blah you know what i mean they're all panic selling at the bottom like i want to buy the sharpest red wicks that mm -hmm, I exactly you can. look to put, set your so limit orders in the these wicks. are aggressive trades in these red wicks but that's where i trade aggressively mm -hmm. down here i demand my product at these lower prices well i mean these you know for the year were high prices, mm -hmm. but well, in the range, right? right? You in always, the, in you the always range. range, and then I supply the market with it. You right? range and until you break out of the range, and then you usually establish a new range. A, that was such a right? beauty that day. Like that's oh, how it works, and do? and that's because it's a mindset. It's a it's a, a psychology thing, right? And and if you yeah. don't know what's going on, you wouldn't even be able to look at the chart and see the range. You just like it's funny how when I show people things, they ask me questions, and I show them stuff, and they're like, "What?" Like, what do you, I'm like, see this? Okay, hold on. Let me put a box here for you. See this box? That's the range run. Oh, okay. I see that. See how this is our lows. All of our lows lining up somewhere around here. All of our highs are lining up somewhere around here in this duration of time, month, two months, whatever it is buy low, sell high. So if you want to figure out how to buy low and sell high, you just need to figure out distinctively where low and high is until you break out of that range and mm -hmm. establish a new range. Mm -hmm. And then you have a new low, a new low and a new high. And that's mm -hmm. how, that's how traders make money. And one thing I do want to point out actually is a lot of people when they're getting into trading, they just want somebody else to give them 
give them signals. But oh, I'll tell you right now, stop paying for I'll tell you right now, somebody that's going to be giving you signals is going to be counter trading the signals they're giving to you because they need a buyer when they want to sell and they need a seller when yeah. they want to buy. So yeah. they're telling you, oh, no, it's a really good time to buy right now. Probably they're probably selling. So that kind of stuff is is yeah. ridiculous. And that's, that's I hate it. too. So if you have all these, you got all these people too that knew that 15k and 16k, or that those were all major lows, right? So now you got you got a lot of these major YouTube players now who knew that, and they're in massive leverage positions from sixteen thousand dollars, from eighteen thousand dollars, from twenty one thousand dollars, with millions so a lot of dollars. All of these line. big players, right? And when the top is in, what do you think they're going to do with those positions? They're going to close them, and the market dumps way harder than anybody expects, and then they all come out after they've closed their trades and go. Well, we didn't expect that. I yeah. mean, uh, nobody expect nobody expected that. Yeah. It's like, I yes, did you it. fucking did. You yeah. did it. Yeah. Right. So that's this why is you why see the, the the market like, move so fast sometimes. It's because don't. those orders are getting hit, and then they have they have uh, take profits all the way up, right? Yeah. And they have limits all the way down. Yeah. And so you like, see them, you see those rapid bounces or those massive rejections. Yeah. It's those orders getting hit, yeah. and you're like. How does somebody get in and out so fast like that? Like you're, yeah. you're, you see the market move and you're like, holy shit, and what's we, going on? And, it's just everything's already pre-set up. All the people, they all, all those people watching, they all FOMO. They get the trade signal late, mm -hmm. so they jump in late and they want to hold longer because they think they can end up just as rich as the guy yeah. they're watching. Yeah. And then they get wrecked, not knowing that they provided the liquidity to yeah. the fucking person they're watching. On exactly, YouTube. and they're potentially right? so, already paying for signals. Yeah. Like it's ridiculous. It's yeah. a lose lose. It's a lose lose. Figure out your own stuff, and if yeah, and it's brutal too because a lot of these guys will have these little. Instagram commercials where they're in a in a Lamborghini and they're on a yacht or whatever, like all this stuff, and they're like, "Hey, we want to trade like me, man. You want to trade like me? Cigar smoking and stuff." It's like, no, not like you. No, yeah. I don't, don't well. just don't get sucked in by that stuff, guys. Be realistic. You know, use your head. If it looks like it's too good to be true, it probably is. There is a better way than traditional finance for sure, but you get into it slowly. Don't even worry about trading if you're new and just start to pay attention because what's going on right now is the Great Division. About 100 years ago, we had the Great Depression, and now we're going through the 20s again, and this time it's going to be the Great Division. What's happening in the United States is they're trying to wean out crypto. It doesn't make any sense to me. I do kind of think that maybe they will flip, like I said last week or the week before. Oh, uh, and it's funny because just last week there's rumors of Trump potentially going pro Bitcoin, and I did say a, a potential Republican uh, because they need some way to, to fight, right? There's the well, it, it, and that's interesting because he used to love the the dollar, right? But but now, but, now who, he, no. but he's kind of the person who opposes the. The, the but, traditional but, government agenda. But he's a politician. They do whatever yeah. they need to do to win. But and like we were saying, there's a massive community here. But if he's they the just want community. If he's the people's president, then he's got to back the people's money. Exactly. And that's fucking Bitcoin. Right? And right? just like, you know, 100 or 50 years ago, they would say, you know, I'm pro-Jesus when a majority of people were Christian. And they did just say whatever they need to say to get in. It doesn't mean that it's going to actually happen. So, for instance... If a lot of people are calling tops right now and we have rumors of potential Republican uh, parties talking about being pro Bitcoin, then this is a buy the news or buy the rumor, potentially sell the news. So maybe we do see on a major news um, or Twitter or something like that feed that that actually, hey, Trump is going pro Bitcoin. You might see a bit of a pump in the beginning, but I think several days later or maybe even hours later, you'll see a massive dump because it's mm -hmm. buy the rumor, sell the news. And it's mm -hmm. for the exact same reason like that we were just talking about. There needs to be a seller for a buyer and et cetera, right? So then they've got their positions in already. The market's going to be pumping because they bought the rumor. And then when you get the news, you think it's going to continue pumping. You start buying. And then that's when they start selling. Right. right? So it's always about being ahead of the game. And even, but, and even they, if you're... But they also tell you to hodl and diamond hands and all this and that so that when you do buy, you hold and you hold and you yeah. watch it trickle down and then you watch it trickle down yeah. until you're screwed. Yeah. But, so. but if you're buying Bitcoin... So, uh, and we look at the chart, then there is a really no bad day. Like even no. if you bought sixty nine k and continued to buy and stayed have, in, you just have to keep buying. Yeah, you only lose when you ignore Bitcoin. Yeah, if you continue to, if you are always buying Bitcoin, you can always be selling because mm -hmm. you're always replenishing the bag. Mm -hmm. If you know that that's your savings account and you buy religiously, then if you need the money, you're never like you're. If you're always buying, you're never going to be that much in the hole. Like. You know, you might be yeah. on a bad day if Bitcoin dropped 10%, maybe you're down 10%. But if you buy consistently, you can always sell consistently if you need the money. It's time right? in the market, right? right? The longer so, you're in the market, the, the more your profit will be because and, over time and is it, when it, you gain your profits, yeah. right? And now after we've seen a 75 to 80% drop 
And we now know that in that cycle, if you DCA, including myself having DCA through that, like I was talking to you guys, the amount that I have in, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? In January, that was, it was less than half of that. Right. And, but I, you know, you consistently DCA through the year and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden, wham, it goes mm -hmm. up hundred percent. You're continuing to DCA and you're like, mm -hmm. whoa, wait a minute. Now this actually makes sense again. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. you know, and you take a bit uh, of profits yeah. and put them back in stables or whatever. Right. Yeah. Because it's all about when you have time in the market, if the, the market does this or this, I guess we're that way. Um, then you buy here, you sell here, you buy here, you sell here. Yeah. And, and, and it, it doesn't matter if it's 20 bucks or 50 yeah. bucks or whatever, right. that 50 bucks that you sold here, even if it was a top or whatever like it's as long as your right. time the longer your time right. the better chances so, you have of making a profit you know you, like like most people have said that if you had bought from the 69k top to now you'd, you'd still be in profit right so if mm -hmm. you buy if you buy ten dollars a day you buy ten dollars a day what's that it's 3200 maybe 3300 a year or something like that off the top of my head um you know what i mean and then that and then all of a sudden that that doubles mm -hmm. so it's like all you did was save money, you save $300 a month mm -hmm. or whatever the case was. And now all of a sudden that's worth six grand. Yeah, and if you want to, you take three grand seven, back out and then that's, seven and then that's pure profit. Seven grand, right? right? And it doesn't matter what happens so from like, there or not because you got your initial investment back already. It's the best savings ever. Ever. Yeah. And all you have to do is look at the fucking chart. It's the best saving. You don't even have to look at the chart. Exists. You can just come check out your future handle bigs and bogs <laughs> once every Sunday, once a week. <laughs> Like no man, I, yeah. I, we Ed, we like, we want you to educate yourself. That's what, dollar, that's, what, that's what Bitcoin and yeah. crypto is all about. You educating yourself, you doing it yourself. You don't need somebody else to do it for you. And I hate it. The one thing that I hate the most is when people ask me, "Hey man, can I give you some money to buy Bitcoin?" And I say, "Fuck no." Yeah, no. yeah, no, no, no. And no. So, and I made that. I, <laughs> I made, will teach I you how to mistake. do it yourself. I will teach you to fish. I made that mistake in the beginning, and I did at the beginning. I did well, and this is a good. A friend of ours, whatever. But anyway, it's uh, at the end of. I know he came to me first, and I said no. Yeah, it obviously didn't go well. And I actually, <laughs> I had more people. Once it became six, more successful in trading, I had more people come to me, and now I'm just like, no. Yeah. Like the no. the best part about crypto is that you don't need anybody else. Yeah, that's the whole you point. Don't need that's the whole help, point, right? Right. The the, the middleman has ruined everything. Yeah. Because they're shaving money that doesn't exist with interest, right? If you give somebody a dollar and you ask for a dollar twenty five back, and you're the guy that's issuing the money, like where does the twenty five cents come from? Yeah. It doesn't exist. That's the whole issue with the traditional finance system. That's yeah. why we have yeah. crypto. That's well, why the, we have the, capped the market is, supply. Like, yeah, but you can't add like that though. That that imaginary fucking gap in the fucking financial system is where real money actually kind of exists and comes from. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, honestly, debt is real money, and the wealthy use debt. Well, that's, like, debt is their of course because debt they is can, their money. They it's can say what's well, their value, right? It's right. They, I, I gave this. I gave millions of dollars out to on loan and yeah. all these people owe me back yeah. several more millions of dollars and, because of the interest and that, so i'm now worth that much that money, money comes it doesn't from make sense mostly the middle and the lower class who think that saving money is the best thing to do yeah because which is brutal because if even if you go into the bank the, they take all the poor if people you walk save into money the bank, and lend it up to the rich walk people. into any bank and look around at the, the uh the stuff on the walls it'll say we can get you a gic for two percent yeah. per year and then it's like, oh, but you, your credit card is going to cost you 99.9 or 19.99 percent per month. It's like, wait a minute. So if I borrow money from you, I have to pay this high interest. Yeah. But if I give you my money, you only give me that much back. Yeah. Mathematically, it doesn't work, and it shouldn't take well, a genius. Credit cards are. It joke. shouldn't take a genius to figure it out. Okay, like there's a major margin of where where's that money? Okay, there's a major margin of of missing money here that you can't. Yeah. You have to be able to realize that it just doesn't work anymore. I mean, it never really worked in the first place. If they if we do traditionally have a debt ceiling, like why would they even use that word if we continue to raise the roof constantly, constantly? There's no such thing as a debt ceiling. It's a joke. We've hit. We talked about it last week. They've hit it for the second We're time. Just in a, it's just a hot air balloon. And eventually yeah. it will run out of yeah. fuel. Yeah. And that's, and that's exactly go. the debt ceiling. The debt it's, ceiling. Ridiculous. <sighs> it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. One trillion dollar coin. Like higher. it's all just a sham yeah, and it's all yeah. just a joke. And that's why we're talking about the great division today, because what's going to happen is the people that realize this and d don't want to play this game any longer will just leave the countries that they are living in if that country is not going to support crypto or Bitcoin or anything anymore. So we're seeing countries I'm that ready. are. They're seeing countries that are, we're seeing countries going pro crypto, pro, bit, pro Bitcoin, no tax uh, on certain things and lo like zero transaction fees and all this t type of stuff. And it's like anybody that uses this type of money 
And and we've said it before, like the true value of crypto is just the knowledge of the financial system in general. It's not actually getting rich off of your bags. It's just the knowledge. The knowledge is the power. The knowledge is the the value in this system, in this space, in this that, community. It's 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 while it's knowing that the traditional finance, it's imaginary. The money we use is imaginary. Mm -hmm. Okay. So people think Bitcoin is imaginary. Guess what? It is. But the beauty of that is that we all just get the imaginary value just because there's not one percent going. We get to control the value. The yeah. imaginary. We control the imaginary exactly. value yeah, you because don't, we say we control the imaginary value. Yeah, you're not like, out there working yeah, yeah. to make money. You work for to take money. You have yeah, to take money exactly. from somebody else. They get to make money out of thin air. They yeah. literally just click a, a button on a computer and it makes money. Yeah. Like that's bullshit, right? You have to actually go, you can't do that. Yeah. It's funny because um my it's daughter a, yeah. wa my daughter wanted me to yeah. print some uh some fifty dollar bills. I was like I can I was like I could I was trying yeah. to explain to her they they raised that, they raised the debt ceiling and we get a credit I support. was explaining to her the relevance yeah. of how this how if, if your fifty dollar bill is basically fake? Like, sure, other people will take it. Right now, it goes around in circulation, but it, it's basically just imaginary. The only reason it works is because we've all agreed that it works. And as like I said, I said like I can just go put this in the scanner and print it. I can make more of these. And she's like, oh, really? Can we do that? I'm like, technically it's illegal, but yes, I can do that. I can print money. Like, you know, it's just, it's all it is is a little piece of paper. That's an IOU. That's what, that's, that's what it is. It's an IOU. It doesn't actually exist, but at least with Bitcoin and crypto, we have a blockchain. We have, we are, we are living on the internet now. So if the internet is verified by you yeah, and only you. Yeah. And so like that is more valuable and sustainable and real than, anything that we've yeah. had before but we can we can call it imaginary though why not because that's what i like well like, that's yeah what, it's just something we so all agree like, on it, you know it, tap it, right into it it'll okay. come down to what we all decide to use yeah. right and it, we're seeing this uh, year by year yeah. increasing very very quickly the, the, now that bitcoin reality, is going the, to take over the, the reality is that the only value in the world is a person's fucking skill set and what we can contribute and, and the your time the, the, yeah well that time but your skill set whatever of it course. is the rest is just an exchange for that time currency knowledge right? yeah so if if we all just contribute and, and, and any innovation made goes to the same value system, Bitcoin, we all benefit. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like if, if somebody... And not, well, not only that, you will get richer over time instead of poorer. Yeah. Because yeah. the money supply, the Bitcoin supply gets yeah, tighter exactly. as well as where we are in an inflationary system where the supply of money grows yeah. and you get poorer for, for because of that. Yeah. But in with Bitcoin and other cryptos, it... It deflates and it, there's less available. We're too distracted so, by spectrum. So you can actually go to the grocery store and buy your groceries for 40,000 sats. And then, you know, a couple months later or a year later, you're buying them for 30,000 sats. So you have more more value to go elsewhere. You're going to, it's, it's, it's meant to flourish the generations. It's meant to, for, for the sustain humanity, right? We've already ignited us. We're, we're, we've grown, we've uh, established our, economics and all that sort of stuff. We have a perfectly flourishing society. Now we need to sustain that society. And that's what Bitcoin is invented for. It's what it will do. And, you know, it's just DCA. But the, because the fact of the matter is, is the smart people will go where they need to go to continue living the life they want to live. And if you don't hop on that train, you will be on the other side of this great division. And that's going to be pretty much something along the lines of basically digital slavery one way or another. And you will probably be quite stuck because once the amount of you bitcoin know, is in other people's hands it's yeah. going to be harder and harder and harder to get but it's, it's no different than how it is now people are already stuck you know what i mean and it's like nothing nothing has changed and you know it was so, so funny just this weekend seeing something that made me realize that ain't shit change you look at any of the court systems the political systems and they're like whatever the fuck is going on in royalty and shit like it always looks the same and it's looked the same for hundreds and hundreds of years you know what i mean so did you see them crown? No, I heard about it. Oh my god, man! Like the fact, the fact that things like that are still even happening. It's weird, very. You weird. You know what I mean? And it's like if you think you're any more than a fucking peasant because of that, like already. You know what I mean? Like I just, I'd see. Yeah, I, I don't. I'm not even gonna dive. It's into weird. That. I can't it's believe weird. it. Like it's super I can't fucking. Believe it. That's you know what I mean? Like I don't. I don't even want to dive. In. But it's, it's <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, Super guys, weird, you but, know what uh, that sound means. That means we are out of time. So do us a favor, smash that like button if you haven't already. If you're, if you're seeing some value or got some questions that you want us to answer, drop them in the comments below, and we'll try to get to them uh, on the next week episode. Subscribe if you're new, and uh, have yourself a good afternoon. Big some box out. <laughs> Peace. Peace. <laughs>
stoppage.